Hey guys, here we go in a kind of a different kind of film study than I usually do. Uh, I usually do full rounds um, and full breakdowns of fighters and styles and you can pick up on nuances of stuff and um, it's more appropriate for like picking up on traps and patterns and getting an understanding of how good a fighter is at, at picking up patterns. Um, and also you get a great narrative for how the fight goes. Um, when you watch it from round to round, you can pick up on adjustments and, and whether a fighter is capable of making adjustments. Um, and it's much more in depth and I understand that it's not for everyone. Um, but also, you know, with the better fighters, with the higher level fighters, you know, Canelo, um, Gennady Golovkin, Lomachenko, um, you know, Floyd Mayweather, you know, um, you know, the, the really high level guys, Crawford, um, there's a lot of substance, you know, there's a lot going on, you know, and, and when you have like lesser fighters, like C-level fighters, you know, a lot of the fights, a lot of the rounds and a lot of the minutes in the fights kind of look alike. They look the same because there aren't a lot of adjustments because there aren't a lot of, um, there aren't a lot of things changing round by round. Their basic strategies are, are always the same. They employ the same kind of C-level stuff. Uh, but another reason for that is that you have... Um, you know, people who put out like crazy biased videos, right? So going round by round breaks any any ability to be biased uh, because you have to talk about everything that goes on, the good and the bad. Um, and uh, so, but I'm going to kind of try to get away from that a little bit. I think people like don't really like 50 minute rounds. They don't want to watch 50 minutes of shit. So um, I've got a breakdown on Regis. Uh, I don't even know how to say his last name. I'm just called the guy Regis. Um, but he's, um, he's fighting in the, uh, 140 pound division right now. Um, I think he's ranked three in one of the divisions. He should be fighting for a title pretty soon. And, um, I think he has a lot of, uh, pro, uh, Regis Progreus. I guess that's what it is. I don't know how to say his last name, but, um, I think he had a lot of amateur experience and he just knocked out, um, Joel Diaz Jr. And I'm not sure if that's, uh, Joel Diaz uh, the coach's son, but, um, that guy had a lot of amateur experience too, and he mopped the fucking floor with that guy, um, so I wanted to do a breakdown on him, and, um, there's some really interesting things about this guy, you know, he looks, he looks pretty talented, you know, obviously he's really strong, he's got great movement, um, but some of the, the lesser stuff, right, I want to talk about it, so let's go ahead and get into the video, so the first thing that we're going to be looking at, the first thing we're going to be looking at is his active guard. Um, and I want you guys to pay attention uh, first to his opponent, right? I want you to first pay attention to his opponent. Watch the guy in the gold trunks, right? And look at how active he is in his guard with his probe, flashing his lead hand, shooting his jab, right? Fainting, you know, sticking his lead hand out there. All of that, and he's not really able to land any punches. You know, he's very active in his guard, dipping, rolling, you know, slipping, uh, but not not able to land any punches with all the activity that he has going on in his um, in his guard and his movement. He's not able to be effective, and Regis does not even have his hands up. If you notice in the clip, Regis has his hands down the entire time. So let's go ahead and talk about that and why that is. So a lot of people talk about what is head movement, right? And people think, oh, if you throw a punch at some guy, right, and he slips the punch, he has good head movement. That's not fucking head movement, you guys. Anyone who thinks that's head movement, that's just common sense. Someone throws a punch at you and you don't move your head, you're just an idiot. You know, that's not head movement. Head movement is when there are not punches coming, right? So we just watched the clip of the guy in gold fainting, probing, using his lead hand, trying to set up a shot, trying to find a time where he's going to be able to throw a punch at his opponent, right? Try to get him out of position. But because... Regis has such good head movement, he never knows, his opponent never knows where his head is going to be. Just like in this clip right here, right? He's here. Now when his opponent shoots that jab, whoops. Now when his opponent shoots that jab, his head's not there anymore. And that's because he has head movement. He doesn't even need to worry about defense or keeping his hands up because his head is never in the same spot. That is what real head movement is. It's not just slipping punches, right? Because you can feint someone into slipping a punch and then walk them into another shot. That's not head movement. That's, you know, anyway, um, again, also, uh, this is now the, the interesting thing is, is, and the way that we grade fighters, right? And that's what we're doing right here. And I forgot to bring this up earlier, but we're actually grading him as a fighter. Um, 
what we're what we're looking for the first criteria is his your ability to control the distance between you and your opponent and kind of set your punches up right so like probing fainting you know um um uh, and, and the ability to to kind of stop your opponent from setting his punches up. That's your that's your number one defense, right? Uh, so let's go ahead and go back just a second. Um, and the the way that Regis is doing that, uh, and notice, like I said, the head movement, um, but the um, the probing and the fainting from his opponent and the jabs, and how he's never even really comfortable throwing his punches because of the fact that his opponent has such good head movement. The way that that Regis is using um his head movement and using his probes and using his um not probes but using his um changing angles right dipping to his his right side right now dipping ducking down right moving all of that stuff because he can punch on all of these different angles this serves as a way to control the distance between him and his opponent because his opponent doesn't know where the punches are coming what punches he's trying to set up and it stops his opponent from feeling comfortable into entering the area in which that they can both score because he doesn't know when his opponent, um, he doesn't know what his opponent is looking to do, what punches he's looking to set up, what punches he's looking to throw. So he doesn't even feel comfortable, even though um, Regis is not, not always controlling the space with his lead hand. He's able to control the space with his head movement and with his with his fainting, just like in this situation, right? So he's here, and he ducks down, and he just happens to get away from a shot. He may not even have seen that shot coming, but because he has good head movement, he's able to get away from it, and then he's able to start countering and throwing punches. Again, great head movement, great control of the space, and other things that he does to control the space between them, is just shooting his jab, right? So he might be picking up on a pattern here, right, where when he's in this position and he leans over to his right, his opponent shoots a jab at him, right, because that's what he's been doing just in these last couple clips. So now he's controlling the distance by using his lead hand to control his opponent's lead hand. If you notice that jab has no opportunity to actually land on his opponent's chin, he's only using it to touch his opponent's glove and to further control the distance between them. You know, very high level stuff. I'm, so far, I'm a big fan. Again, great head movement, probing, you know, shooting his jab, controlling his opponent, controlling the space. And his opponent does not feel comfortable uh, initiating any kind of offense uh, because of that. And that's exactly what you want, especially from a young fighter. Uh, now we're going to talk a little bit about his offense. The second way that you grade a fighter is how they set their offense up um, and the amount of danger that they put themselves in to set their punches up. Um... And then the third way we'll talk about is defense. Um, but the, the second way, you want a lot of probing. You know, you want a lot of fainting. You want to you want to find ways to draw your opponent out of position. You don't want your opponent in position to throw punches back at you. Um, or you want your opponent in position to where he's he's going first so that you can react appropriately to um, to whatever they give you, right? It's like kind of like playing paper, scissor, rocks, but like a live action version where if you see your opponents giving you scissors, you can smash them with rock. But then if you're the one fainting and probing, you can act like you're going to give them paper and then they go to give you scissors and you turn it into a rock and you crush them. I don't know if that's going to be a great analogy and you guys are going to follow up on it correctly, but that's the style of probing, right? You, you probe paper, and then they're like, oh, I can cut that shit. And then they go to, they go to, you know, counter your jab or counter your right hand. And then you're like, JK, it was a rock the whole time and you crush them, you know. And that's the idea of having a, a solid offense is not, not giving your opponent something to work with um, that's honest. You know, you want to be very dishonest with your opponent. You want to trick them into, into stuff. So here we have him, some of his offense probing, right? And how he kind of dips to the right. And he looks at how his opponent reacts to it right there, right? And he's like, okay, I can work with that. So now he, now, whoops. So then he starts flashing his lead hand, getting him to draw his lead hand out and to battle for lead hand dominance, right? Which is not something that's happened very much in the fight. Um, but once he gets his opponent to start doing that, he's able to lean over on that same kind of head movement and disguise that left hand to the body. Uh, pretty decent work, not bad. Uh, and then goes right into um, the you know very basic style of offense that you give your opponent with flashing the lead hand from a southpaw position uh, and then trying to take lead foot dominance on them. Uh, the next way he looks to set up his offense again, head movement, head movement. So head movement changes levels, probes, right? Gets his uh, tries to bring his opponent's hands up, right? Because the last few times he's done that, he's shot the jab to the head. And then he goes for a left hand to the body, right? Very basic stuff. Um, 
but very responsible in the way that he didn't commit to this jab. If you notice, he's not full out throwing that jab, so his opponent doesn't really have an opportunity to counter it. So it's, it's definitely a probing jab, and he gets his opponent to bring his hands up, and he's able to land a body shot right there. Good work from him. Uh, the next style of offense, right, or in the same line of offense, is kind of a, a catch-and-counter style um, uh, offense. And, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of this, especially if after you watch the clip and you kind of see, oh, wait, why is he doing that? But uh, it's, it's also trap setting, his ability to set traps, right? So, again, his hands are down, right? He's using his head movement, dip to the right, dip to the left, and he baits his opponent to throw that jab. And he goes to the body with the body shot um, and lands a great shot, right? Uh, and then immediately after that, gets low. Whoops. Watch how he gets really low, right? And he, he, he can see after landing that body shot, his opponent is guarding, that his, he's guarding his body, right? And so he stays low, stays low again. And once he starts to go low, he gets his opponent to bring his guard down, thinking it's going to be another body shot after that other body shot and goes to the head and lands a huge head shot. Now he's got his opponent bringing his hands up. He probes him and uses that to control his opponent's guard and bring his hands up and goes for a body shot right there. So understanding how to pick and choose his offense based on what his opponent is giving him. Um, and all of that set up off of this kind of, I want to say it's catch and counter style, right? And it is. The only difference is he's not catching this shot. He's actually just, you know, baiting the jab. Um, and going to the body instead um, and then picking up on his opponent's reads right and and changing up his offense um, uh, so far you know very versatile very powerful uh, and now some of the interesting things about this kind of style of um, of trap setting right and it's not always super effective I think I might have gone too far back uh, it's not always super effective um, but one of the reasons why it works for him is because he's such a big puncher right uh, these kind of traps where you go low, right, and then you go, oh, I'm going low, I'm going low, and then you go high, um, they don't always work. Sometimes your opponent's going to pick up on them, um, and then they, they just change their whole approach. Oh, he's doing that faint low thing, so he's going to go high, but now I don't know if he's going high or if he's going low, kind of like in this next clip. If you don't have the power to really take advantage of this, um, all you're going to do is chase your opponent away, right? Then they're not going to engage on you on that front, uh, and those probes become useless because you're no longer able to bait them into a micro-engagement. It's very similar to Floyd Mayweather and how he uses his jab, his jab, and then he, he'll go jab, jab, and once he gets used to start trying to catch the jab, um, he'll turn it into a left hook instead. Um, but he's never... I mean, he, I think he has knocked someone out with it. I think it was Diego Corrales back in, like, you know, the 1800s. But... Um, because of the fact that Mayweather doesn't have the most amount of power, he's not able to capitalize on these kinds of traps for his offense as well as a fighter like this, like Regis is. Um, and uh, while these kinds of traps are very effective um, in the short term, uh, the long term, you know, I, I would kind of wonder about his offense. Um, but because of the fact that, you know, everyone he hits, he kind of knocks out, it hasn't really, it hasn't really had to matter yet. So we won't really get to see a... Um, we won't really get to see an evolution of his offense until he finds somebody who can take his shots, you know. And I know that he has three fights on his record that are um, that are not knockouts. I think he's 20, 20 and set, 20, 20 and zero with seventeen knockouts. I mean, at least one point he was. So there are a few fights where he hasn't knocked the guy out, but I couldn't find tape of them um, to really watch. Uh, only like highlight videos, and you never get a great sense of what's really going on in a highlight video. So the next thing, so, you know, decent offense, you know, um, decent trap setting, you know, but not a lot of great probing, not a lot of like uh, baiting his opponent out of position, um, even though he does do a good job of controlling the distance between the two fighters. Now we're going to talk about defense. Um, and the kinds of defense that you want when you're when you're watching a fighter, um, uh, you want them to be controlling their opponent. You know, a lot of people think you know slipping punches is defense, or rolling shots is defense, or blocking punches is defense. Um, but all those kinds of styles of defense can be taken advantage of, um, as you saw in the Sergey Lipinets fight. Um, um, it's really easy to get him out of position, right? If you feint a right hand and he's going to roll away from it and then you can catch him with a left hook. And um, even though you might know the, the perfect counter to each and every um, to each and every punch or each and every 
um, positional advantage. If your opponent starts fainting and baiting you, um, you can be walked into a shot. And there are a couple of situations in rounds three and four that I haven't done a breakdown for. Um, that I'm, I'm probably going to do a breakdown more of this style um, where Sergei Lipinets thinks that one punch is coming um, and he gets cracked with another one. Uh, particularly, the he thinks his opponent is going to shoot a jab at him and now he starts opening up with a lead left hook and gets caught with a big lead left hook instead. Um, and that's because of poor defense and not controlling the space between them. Um, but anyway, we're going to talk about uh, Regis's defense here. Um, so this looks very good. If you watch this this clip, right? He slips, he rolls, and it looks fancy. Um, he comes in with the lead hand. Boom. His opponent kind of tries to counter it. He gets lead foot dominance. He's in position to throw a punch. His opponent starts pivoting and turning off. So he pivots and turns off as well. And then for added measure, so he's in this position, added measure, he goes into this position, and then he pivots out again, takes a further step, right? Seemingly very responsible defense, right? It looks flashy. It looks good. Everyone's like, whoa, man, this guy's the shit. But let's take a look at some other instances in which he's not as, as fluent or where it's a little more dangerous. So, number one, his opponent takes lead foot dominance on him. And what does he do? He gives him, we're going to call this the Erickson Lubin, right? He gives him the Erickson Lubin. He thinks a head punch is coming and he kind of ducks into it. One of the problems with that is he doesn't have defensive responsibility because he's ducking the headshot um, if it was a straight punch, uh, but he doesn't keep his left hand up. Um, over his over his face, he's not blocking with his glove, so he could have wound up walking into a shot just like Erickson Lubin did. Um, and now that's not the worst part about his defense in this situation. His opponent is turning him right, but he's as he's turning him now he finds himself if he was a little bit better of a fighter, his opponent, where he has a positional advantage on his opponent. His opponent has his back turned, and instead of walking all the way out like this, he could have taken another turn and started throwing punches at at Regis while he was out of position. And the reason that he's able to do this is because Regis is not controlling him. He's not making sure to body up with him. He doesn't clinch him. Um, he doesn't put his forearms on him. He keeps his hands tight and close together so that he's in, in punching position, right? Or that he can attempt to be in punching position or land punches of his own. But he's not in a, a real position to defend himself because of this, because he could get baited into another shot. He could, his opponent could faint him or, you know, Whatever he could do, um, he has the opportunity to do it. Um, and it's not important that he that his opponent doesn't do these things. It's just important to note that they would they would be effective on him because he's not controlling his opponent, because he's not getting his forearms on him, because he's not using his glove to push him away, because he's not taking a different angle, he's not turning, he's not shooting out, he's he stands there in this position and it leaves him vulnerable. Now, again, very similarly. He goes to take lead foot dominance, um, but it's interesting. This happens a few times in this fight. Um, uh, his opponent tries to take lead foot dominance at the same time as him, and they kind of get stuck um, uh, crossing feet or like kind of um, tangling feet a little bit. And I wonder, you know, on a side note from the the Regis, I wonder if this is uh, the Regis breakdown. I wonder if this is a tactic that his opponent was attempting to utilize when sparring uh, left-handed fighters is as soon as they throw their first punch, attempting to take lead foot dominance on them. That's something that Vasily Lomachenko does very well, taking lead foot dominance on his opponent's offense. Um, he did it extremely well against um, Nicholas Walters, setting it, setting the trap up and baiting it, and then taking lead foot dominance. And for all of you that are interested in watching that, I did a, a very, very, very comprehensive breakdown on that fight. Um, and that is just a masterful, masterful performance from Lomachenko, if you're interested in checking it out. Um, but, um, but I wonder if that's something that he was attempting to do. Now, getting back to the film study side, uh, we see that their feet kind of tangle up and he takes the outside angle, but his opponent, after, after he starts taking that outside angle, his opponent takes an angle too, right? And now he's in a better position and he's able to throw shots at, at Regis and Regis is not in a position to defend himself. If you notice this jab comes. And he could have landed that, and if he would have followed it up with another punch, he could have landed that too. Maybe a shot to the body, or maybe, you know, the that right uppercut to the head that Regis showed that he kind of was ducking into, right? And that's because after he takes this after he takes this angle. Whoops, come on, you motherfucker. Don't do this shit to me. Why you do this? Okay. 
Whoops. I don't know where the fuck it's supposed to be. No. Okay, it's back here. Um, so after he takes that angle, uh, he doesn't control his opponent, right? He doesn't, again, he doesn't make sure to clinch him. He doesn't grab his arms. He doesn't push his put his arms onto his collarbone, right? He doesn't take an angle off, right? He kind of stays in that same spot planted um, and kind of just, I don't know, hopes for the best, doesn't think his opponent's going to throw punches, and just puts himself in a very dangerous position. Um, and against a better fighter, right, he's going to pay for that, especially if these are the habits that he's creating, while he's while he's younger and he's developing now again great offense right he hides the punch pretty well leans into it his opponent doesn't see it coming in time but after he throws the shot no head movement he doesn't control his opponent he doesn't take an angle um, he doesn't have any defensive responsibility where he throws it and then now all his weight is on his right leg and then he could pivot to his right right he could turn to his right um, he doesn't get his right hand up as you see, his opponent is in position to throw a left-hand counter, but he doesn't even react to it, right? If he would have actually just thrown that punch, he very likely would have just landed it. Um, and the way that you grade this in terms of defense is af when you're out of position. How do you defend yourself out of position? When you throw punches at your opponent, you're out of position. Um, and so far, it's not looking great for, for Regis and his defensive responsibility. And again, right after that shot, takes lead foot dominance, his opponent rolls, takes a um, pivots out uh, and tries to control him his opponent does a good job of trying to control Regis but look at what happens if instead of coming back with that backhand and controlling his head right what happens if his opponent would have come back with a right hook and just walked his opponent walked Regis into it right because Regis is while he's taking that positional advantage right he doesn't control him with his right arm right he's supposed to keep his right arm on his opponent at all times and he kind of goes a little wide but that's not the point but if he controlled him he could make sure that that his opponent is a little, at least off balance he could make sure that his opponent is not in a position to counter him uh, like he is right here and he could come back with just a straight right hand or a right hook or anything so so far we just not showing the great amount of defensive responsibility and again uh, probes stays in position lands the left hand to the body but look at this he eats a left hook from his opponent because of the fact that he doesn't punch with head movement um, after landing that shot he doesn't take an angle um, he doesn't start taking an angle or have an angle in mind um, and he winds up just getting hit with a with a pretty decent right hook you know it's not a hard shot but again against better fighters he's not going to get away with this stuff um, especially when he's relying on the on his power to be to be the the difference in in a fight um, and his ability to to knock fighters out. Um, so if, if he thought that that was going to be a knockout punch and it wasn't, like say he was fighting, you know, Terrence Crawford and he threw that shot, even if it landed, Terrence Crawford could knock him out with one shot, right? One shot to the temple, right? Or wind up landing a big combination himself. Or Terrence Crawford might have blocked it or whatever. But because he doesn't exercise defensive responsibility after throwing his punches, it puts him himself in a very dangerous position because remember part of boxing is getting your opponent out of position so that you're not in position to be hurt while you're landing punches or while your opponent's trying to land punches uh, finding ways to take away that that offense and what happens here is say his opponent had baited him into throwing that left hand to the body so he could throw that right hook right now he's just getting he's just going to get cracked because he's not looking to control his opponent because he's out of position and he doesn't know how to defend himself when he's out of position by using pivots, by using turns, by shifting his weight um, and turning out, uh, or by controlling his opponent. And again, the same thing, shoots those jabs and comes forward, but doesn't control his opponent. Again, right here, not controlling his opponent, landing the shot, not smothering him, uh, not using his left arm after that shot to fold up and put pressure on his opponent's arms to control his opponent's arms, not taking an angle, and again, coming in here, boom, lands this great shot, right? But what if his opponent slipped it? There's no defensive responsibility. He doesn't take an angle. He doesn't follow up the shot. He just kind of watches his punch um, and expects it to do the job, right? Again, not being in great position after he throws a punch or, throw, or tries to get his opponent out of position. Um, and uh, again, you know, even though that punch does wind up knocking him out, you know, uh, no defensive responsibility, but 
One thing that I do like, now this is this is an instance, this is really interesting, and this is very classic of people when you get fighters that, uh, once you hurt somebody, knowing how to take advantage of hurting them, right? So notice he's, his opponent is already hurt, right? And what does he do? He, f he probes a left hand to the face, brings his opponent's guard up, which is very high level boxing. Learning how to do this against fighters that are not hurt is probably the toughest challenge because people always expect that um, when you move your hands away from your face against a professional fighter, they're gonna knock you out, right? But as we noticed, uh, some of the conventions in boxing, right? So like the first thing, and this is a little bit of a tangent, the first thing that you notice when you go into the gym and you do your first day of sparring, and try this, right? Just try this. Anybody who does sparring, just go in there and, and leave your hands a little bit low, right? Leave your hands a little bit low and try the Regis, right? Use a little, use some good head movement, slip, roll, duck, right? Even when there are no punches coming, just do that. What's the first thing an amateur coach is going to tell you? And I'm not saying amateur like he trains amateur fighters. I'm saying amateur as in a shitty coach. They're going to tell you to keep your hands up. That's exactly what they're going to tell you because they don't know shit about boxing. Um, and as you saw in the, during the course of this fight, and granted his opponent's not the greatest fighter, but that's not the point. His opponent had very little success actually landing punches, and we just didn't have his hands up during the, the entire fight. Um, but these kinds of style of, of punches, right, um, probes and feints and, you know, that kind of stuff where you just bring your lead hand out, right? How, how often are you going to ever throw your, your power shot? And not expect it to land, but only use it to set up another shot. You know, how often is your coach ever going to tell you that? Oh, just fake a right hand, right? But put it all the way in his face to bring his gloves up, right? It's very high-level stuff. And people don't expect uh, fighters to do that against um, against high-level opponents, right? As you notice, like, you'll watch, like... Um, a lot of great fighters fighting like mediocre or average opposition and they do all these fancy ass shit and then as soon as they get in there with their first real test it's all like abc boxing oh they have their hands up they're very rigid they're very in this like they call it technical fighting but it's garbage they just they they revert to an amateur style because they're so afraid to make a mistake because they don't believe in their skills um Whereas this is the kind of stuff, like Vasily Lomachenko, right? You see him do that, like he's, like, like uh, Freddie Roach talks about it all the time, how, oh, he's not going to be able to do that against real good fighters. He's not going to be able to do that probing stuff. He's going to get hit. He's going to, that's because Freddie Roach is a shitty trainer. He doesn't understand how effective this kind of, that kind of work is um, against, against your opponents. He doesn't understand that, yes, you can bait your opponent into throwing a punch at you uh, by using these techniques uh, and not committing to them, by using them as probes. But getting back to Regis, um, this is the kind of stuff that he needs to do to become like a B or, an, or, or a, a four or a five-star fighter um, and is probing, right? So notice how he gets his opponent to, to bring his gloves up by probing with a power punch, a punch that just hurt him, and then he goes to the body. And then right after going to the body, he shows actual defensive responsibility by throwing that turning his hips and then taking an angle on his opponent rather than standing in front of him and that's all stuff that he should have been doing starting from here right boom throwing the left hand to the body and then taking an angle immediately right not standing in front of him uh in this instance after he takes um an angle he needs to control his opponent or take another angle pivot on him again again throwing another shot to the body and then after he throws it, take another angle. You know, very similar to uh, to what he does in the last clip. And those are ways that he's going to improve his game and increase his defensive responsibility and mitigate the amount of times that his opponent is going to catch him out of position. And again, out of position. Whoops. Again, out of position is anytime you you're not in position to defend yourself. Like right now, he's in position to to slip or duck or block any punch that his opponent throws at him whether his hands are down or not that's not the point right but once he throws a punch now he's not right his weight is transferred onto his right leg and uh his arm is extended and this is when this is when a lot of fighters look to capitalize on on your mistakes and actually land their offense this is the most common um, style of offense from fighters is waiting for your opponent to make a mistake or put themselves out of position. Um, and the difference between most fighters and a fighter like um, a very, very high level fighter like Vasily Lomachenko is he knows how to make people get into position like this. And that's why he gets a five star rating. Um, 
Shout out to my boy. I don't remember what his name was, but he was like, man, you should change that shit because uh, you're always going to irk people with that. Um, so going from A to B, I'm going to go to five stars, four stars uh, for one set of uh, responsible offense, uh, five stars for both sets of offense and defense, and three stars for just being a solid fighter with good um, good technical ability, uh, good, um, good fundamentals. Um, so grading Regis... Uh, he does put himself out of position. His defensive responsibility is horrible. He gets zero points in that category. Um, it's it's not super easy to get him out of position because he has fantastic head movement. Um, he he controls the space between his opponents very well. Um, power helps with that. Having power helps with that because his their opponents get to make fewer mistakes, um, and that is one of the criterias, right? So like a fighter that has great has good speed and good power will get a plus in whatever category that they're in um uh if um like you know (laughs) it was easier when it was letter grades but four stars plus or three stars plus or whatever um as far as setting his punches up um he does it you know in this instance he waits for his opponent to put himself out of position, right? That's kind of waiting for his opponent. He is baiting the shot better than your average fighter where they are um, simply waiting for them to make a mistake, whereas he looks like he's making a mistake constantly by having his hands down, and his opponent looks to capitalize on him having his hands down, um, and he's able to land a great shot. Again, another glaring reason why having your hands down doesn't fucking matter um, as long as you have good head movement, right? So here, here. And he's able to roll a little bit away from that shot and then roll into a power pot, a power punch after. And also, while we're talking about that, when he does throw the shot, he does move his head as well, right? Which is also very important as he transitions his weight. Um, so that does go a little bit into defensive responsibility for that. But after he throws the punch, um, that's the that's where the problem is. Is if that wasn't a, a hard enough shot to hurt your opponent, um, they could come back with counters um, while you're out of position, while your weight is transferred in, in a non-optimal way. But um, so the grade that I'm going to give him right now is uh, three plus stars. Um, you know, he doesn't have the greatest offense, right? The the very average. Um, jab, jab, take lead foot dominance, and then hope you can land a left hand to the body. You know, it's pretty tired out. Um, it needs to be refined a little bit against lower level guys, you know, who don't have great positioning or don't have um, the ability to, like, slip punches or roll or whatever. Um, and I think that there's some clips in here. Let's see where that clip is. So, like, right here, right? Opponents that can't do that, they're just going to get wrecked, right? Um, or that aren't countering the jab, they're just going to get wrecked. Um, but anybody who's worth the worth their weight in salt or whatever that phrase is, um, um, they're not going to be fooled by it, and it's not going to be an effective way to set your punches up. Um, but decent defense, good trap setting, um, and I think that there's a lot of potential in this guy as a good fighter. Uh, the most the most important thing is his ability to control the space between them and having an active guard. Um, I'm a big fan of his active guard. Uh, it's going to stop him from being in a lot of danger. It's going to stop him, his opponents from being able to lead against him because he's the one controlling the distance by them not knowing when a punch is coming. As you can see, he can throw punches from different angles. He's down here, throws a punch. Um, uh, he leans to his to his left throws a punch he can throw punch from those different angles um, and you can never really time or create patterns against it because he's so versatile in that regard Um, so I give him three stars with a little plus for the speed and power Um, and I don't know about the speed he's got great um, he's very sharp uh, with his counters or with his um, with his punches and that goes much further than than speed but um, but great power for sure Um, anyway uh, like I said three stars plus uh, plus the intangibles of Um, the speed or power Um, anyway let me know what you guys think about this format I don't know why it wound up being 35 fucking minutes but anyway uh, let me know what you guys think thanks